Hey everyone, Rachel here with Give Butter. And you are just going to love today's success story. I have here with me Mark from Trinity Habitat in Fort Worth. And he is going to be sharing why he turned um, to Give Butter to help with emergency funding during the coronavirus. He's also going to share what made them choose Give Butter as a fundraising platform for their um, campaign top tips and tricks. You're going to walk away with a wealth of knowledge about fundraising and marketing, I promise. And you're also going to walk away with inspiration for getting the most out of the Give Butter platform. So Mark, thank you so much for representing um, Trinity Habitat and for joining us today. Yeah, happy to be here. Um, so just to start, could you tell everybody a little bit more about who you are, and of course, many listening are probably familiar when they hear Habitat for Humanity, but if you could share more about Trinity Habitat, what makes um, you all special in what you're doing? Sure, um, so I'm the Marketing and Engagement Director at Trinity Habitat for Humanity, um, and that is the Habitat for Humanity affiliate that covers the greater Fort Worth um, area in Texas. And so um, Trinity Habitat, um, build strong families and neighborhoods, um, primarily through the construction of quality, affordable homes. Um, and we've been, you know, blessed to be doing that for um, over 30 years. Last year, we celebrated our 30th anniversary, um, and that represents more than 700 families. Um, yeah. They're now living in quality, safe, affordable homes throughout our area. Um, and so, yeah, that's a little bit about what I do. That's incredible. I mean, congratulations to you and the entire Trinity Habitat team, 30 years. Yep, 30 years. So let's talk a little bit more about your current campaign, Habitat Builds Back. Yes. What is your fundraising and marketing strategy for that? So um, the idea around Habitat Builds Back is as we kind of were um, getting into the COVID-19 and all the issues surrounding that as, as everybody has been dealing with that, um, you know, we were having to make really difficult decisions about um, what we were going to do with our mission. And, you know, we, we build quality, affordable homes alongside families. And, um, you know, we have on average about 800 volunteers that come out every month to help us build those homes. And when you go from 800 volunteers to zero, um, it makes a big difference to our bottom line of what we're able to accomplish and what we're able to do. And, um, you know, and as we see kind of certain partners and donors that aren't able to give in the way that they um, were in the past, you know, or with the uncertainty, um, you know, things were just kind of slowing down. And so we ended up cutting the production of our homes in half. We were on track to build um, 59 new homes this year in our area. Um, and we had to make that difficult decision to cut that in half. And so part of Habitat Builds Back was just the idea of being able to, as we start to imagine what life looks like on the other side of COVID-19, or at least as we're making our way out of that, you know, how are we gonna build back? And so we created the Habitat Builds Back campaign so that we wouldn't have to cancel the construction of any more homes this year. Um, Cause you know, when, you have to cancel the construction of a habitat home. It, you know, it's never a fun or easy decision to do. Um, and, you know, that's not just canceling a family's dream of owning their own home. But for a lot of our families, it's that dream of greater financial security, greater financial stability, me, being able to live now in a healthy, safe home. Um, and, you know, to be able to say, to families, I'm sorry, we're going to have to, you know, I know we were on track and planning to do that this year, but that's going to be next year or maybe even further out. Um, it was really difficult. And we didn't want to have to do that with any, any more families. And we wanted to keep building. And so we wanted to partner with the community and figure out how we could build back. And that's the idea behind Habitat Builds Back. So it's that forward thinking, you know, what are we going to do after this? What's next? Because yes. we'll just walk through, we do not want that that to happen to any other family. Exactly, yep. So what was the fundraising and marketing strategy behind getting there to be able to build more houses? Um, so one of the, um, a, a few different things. Uh, we 
we definitely wanted to take advantage of the Giving Tuesday now. Um, a lot of, uh, there was just a lot of buzz around that. And so we wanted to take advantage of that. But, but we've done Giving Days in the past and they've been successful in, in everything. But, you know, a lot of times um, some people just hear it that day or they hear it the day after or different things. And so we decided to use Giving Tuesday more as a launching pad for our giving campaign um, as for a giving month. So our campaign actually started on Giving Tuesday and is going through the end of the month. So we're right in the middle of the campaign. Um, and so that was some thoughts there. We wanted to connect with you know, past donors. We wanted to connect with our audience through social media. Um, and then we also wanted to connect people to our Habitat families that are in their homes right now and what they're dealing with and going through. Um, and so on our Give Butter page, our top featured video was actually um, a little drive-by video that I created with our families where I just hopped in the car and drove by their homes and from a safe distance, um, checked in on them and asked them how they were doing and heard their stories. Um, Mark, and it, what do you think about maybe sharing like a minute of that video? Because I watched it and I think it's really impressive. Yeah. You are you feel, open to that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let me share my screen. You guys are going to love this video. It's so good. Okay. Hey, everybody. Our Habitat families have something they want to tell you. From a safe distance, of course. So come ride with me and let's go see him. We're at our first stop. Let's go see the Leadley family. Thank you. Thank you. During this time of quarantine, we are very blessed to be in our home. I'm very thankful that I have affordable mortgage um, that I can stay home and take leave to provide. Um, caring for my kids and helping with homeschooling. Thank, Thank you, Habitat. Thank you. Thank you for building our house. That's that, that. I love the signs that they made too. Those were so encouraging. Um, so Mark, what, um, what else were you going to share about? You have the video on the top of your campaign. Yeah. And so, so those, those stories that, that, that I heard from our families, which I really, I had no idea what I was going to hear when I set off uh, in the in the car that morning. And uh, I met with probably about 12 of our families and it was so amazing to hear their stories. And so those were the stories I wanted to share throughout the campaign, whether it was through the video or sharing um, a quote of their testimonial or things like that, because it really exemplified what we were trying to go for. And that was that because of the past support of our Habitat donors and the support of our volunteers and those that shop at our Habitat restores or donate there, um, you know, it was the difference for our families being able to weather the COVID-19 crisis um, mm -hmm. because they, you know, were in a, a home where they had financial stability. Um, you know, one of the, you know, Miss Ruth that I met with, you know, it was, it had been over a month and she hadn't gotten a check um, or even been able to get through to unemployment. Um, but because of her affordable mortgage, she said, I'm doing okay. I can, I can wait for the process to work out because I've been able to build up my savings. Um, you know, or Janessa that was on there, she built her home last year. She said, if this had happened last year, I don't know what I would have done. I wouldn't have been able to take the leave um, and the pay cut that went along with that to be home and take care of my kids and homeschool them. I don't know what I would have done last year. And so I wanted to share those stories um, so that people could see, um, you know, a real life example of what financial stability, what a safe home can mean to a family when things go wrong and things have gone really wrong and, and become very difficult. Um, and that's when you need that rock, that stability of a home. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what I hear you saying is, for this campaign, your strategy was to use Giving Tuesday now as your launching point and make it a month long campaign, which I think is brilliant because you're right. So many people miss it yeah. on the day up and it's just a short 24 hour period. And 
especially now when the news cycle is so noisy, I think it's so smart that you've decided to stretch it out a little bit. And then second, just highlighting success stories of um, people who have had homes and how they're benefiting from your mission. Definitely. Um, and I, I think too, with the with stretching it out, because Give Butter offers the ability and we activated the option to fundraise, um, you know, if if people are just hearing about it on one day, they're not going to fundraise and get it out to their group that same day. They may on Giving Tuesday give and make the decision to fundraise. So we wanted to allow that time for people to fundraise as well. That's a great point. So you're talking about the team fundraising portion. Yes. Right here. Yep. Awesome. Um, so could you tell us a little bit more about why you chose Give Butter? You were kind of talking a little bit about it to have a landing page for the whole month. What about Give Butter specifically made you want to choose it for this campaign? Yeah, so so we first started using Give Butter last fall. Um, we had, you know, our 30th anniversary and we had a big backyard bash party that was coming up. And we had just been in search of, of a new platform that was easy and 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 honestly the the biggest thing that caught our attention right off the bat was we wanted a way for people to be able to to make donations via venmo um nice. and, and so we we found give butter and and it was just such a wonderful team and and the solution was a hundred percent it was almost hundred percent what we needed and a week before the event, the, the, we worked with y'all's technical team and they launched the um, Express Checkout um, specifically so we could use it for our event. Um, and so they just made that Venmo process even smoother and faster um, and PayPal and all of those. And so, so we, we have had success through probably three or four campaigns since last fall mm -hmm. um, through Give Butter. So, um, I actually was gone on paternity leave and the team had set something a little different up for Giving Tuesday. Um, and I got back about a week before Giving Tuesday and I said, this is great groundwork, but we've got to do it on Give Butter. It's just going to be so much better. And so we just shifted and, and moved everything over to Give Butter. And I think we're all really happy that, that we did. That is really amazing. It sounds like you chose Give Butter for its usability. That's user friendly for you. And a lot of times you get feedback that it's easy for donors as well. And I see that your donors on the right hand side of the supporter feed have made so many um, heartfelt comments on the side and just seem to be really engaged and donor engagement is incredibly important for these one off campaigns to build success for the future. Um, so what have you seen for your donors and how they're interacting with your campaign? Yeah, definitely. It's, I, I think that's one of the other big reasons for us is just, like you said, that user friendliness. Um, that was the whole reason we went with GiveButter in the, you know, last fall and continue to go with GiveButter is because it's user friendly. We've used other um, giving platforms and peer to peer fundraising platforms and, and people, we just, the feedback constantly was, we were confused. We didn't know which step to do first or what thing. And, and with Give Butter, it just kind of works. Um, and that's what we're looking for. And, you know, especially when somebody's ready to make a donation, you know, we've done all the work that we can to mm -hmm. tell our stories, to share our mission and give them a link. And, you know, at that point, it just has to work. Um, and with Give Butter, um, that's, that's how it is. And, and it allows people to give the way they want to give. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things for us is if it, they want to give via Apple pay or they want to give via Google pay or PayPal or Venmo or just a credit card, mm -hmm. um, they can do that. And, and so, um, just that user friendliness. And then, and then also, um, we see people engage a lot more like with the comments on the side. Um, just because of the fl the donation flow, it just, it's easy, you know, people just do it, you know, or they, you know, people add a picture or they add a little mm -hmm. gift to their donation and it just brings the little donor, uh, feed on the side to life, mm -hmm. um, as people are doing, doing those different things. So, um, all of those things, user friendliness, donor engagement, um, those are all reasons we go with Give Butter. 
what would you say about um, any other feedback or tips that you would give others who are using Give Butter on their campaign page about the way you're marketing your story? Because that really stood out to me when I looked at your page. You have this great visual, it's easy to understand, quotes um, from beneficiaries, where the money's going, a hashtag, your live stream event. We haven't even talked about that yet. Um, you just make the story really easy to follow. That's what stood out to me. Um, what was your thought process behind that? Um, so I guess a, a few different things. Um, you know, as as we come down to the store, you know, we 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 obviously want to we want to start with the video. Um, we find that the video is more compelling than than an image, mm -hmm. uh, and so um, we we started with the video at the top, and then you know people's attention spans are so short, and and so the idea was to put the information on there is in as bite size of of way as possible. Um, and so I started with two of our strongest kind of quotes, which are actually stories from the video. Um, but some people aren't going to watch the video, you know, they're going to be scrolling down. And so we want them to see that. And then it's just kind of a prioritizing of, okay, what's the most, you know, the next most important thing for people to see. Um, you know, I really always try not to build to the most important thing. I always try to start with the most important thing because that may be the only thing someone sees. That's right. um, and so um, with the layout of, of our page, um, we have the advantage um, in, a, in a past life, I, I was a web developer. Um, so I can okay. mess around with the code and I can do those different things to make, the, uh, make that little green box look nice. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that it's the kind of thing that anyone with a basic understanding of, of HTML or, or CSS could, could add, you know, could make something like, I mean, that could also be an image, um, right. you know, like, like the images. So uh, I don't think that that's a necessary piece of it. Um, but, you know, just making sure, I mean, because the Give Butter tool is very easy. You know, I want to make this bold. I want to make this italic. I want to add an image here. I want to add another video here. Um, but, you know, just trying to make it easy for people's eyes to flow down and make it so it looks good. Um, I don't know. Any, anything else I can expand on there? Yeah, why don't you expand a little bit more on your live stream experience because you had shared with me prior to the call that this was your first experience with live stream and I think you're in a really good company with people listening. So what are your lessons learned about live stream fundraising? Yeah, so this was the first time that we'd done kind of a live concert and we we partnered with Wynn Williams who is a good friend of our organization and a, and a wonderful artist um, right uh, out of out of Fort Worth um, and so he he loves us and loves our mission and he said hey how can I help and we said well you know we've got this giving Tuesday now coming up um, what do you think about uh, doing a live concert with us and so he said oh I'd love to do it and so we kind of did it in such a way where our, we linked up our Facebook accounts and he, he, he ran the, the feed from uh, his, his account and it went through ours. But we, um, what I did when the, when the event went live, um, cause we had our, um, our drive by thank you video that was normally at the top, the YouTube video. I basically just moved that down to the store, to the top of the story. And I put the live stream at the top um, oh, as, okay. as the main video mm -hmm. so that even people coming during the live event or still there, the, I didn't want to lose that great drive by thank you video. Mm -hmm. um, so I just added it temporarily down at the bottom, switched it to the live stream. Um, the, the other thing is, is that um, we promoted um, the Give Butter page as the main place to watch the concert. They could see it on Facebook. They could see it um, in their app or or whatever. But um, we promoted everybody to come to um, the Give Butter page and 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 just so that so what we use is you'll see in the on the screen there it says trinityhabitat.org/buildsback. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so we always, whenever we have a campaign, we always have a central domain that mm -hmm. our URL that is the main place where we would try to send everybody. You know, when we have our, our North Texas Giving Day, it's always, we're, we're raising funds in a single day for one house. Um, it's trinityhabitat.org forward slash one day. And so all of our advertising is around that. And so trinityhabitat.org forward slash builds back always forwards directly to the give butter page. Mm -hmm. So then people aren't having to remember the give butter forward slash habitat builds back. They just remember our, our one link. Um, and so, so anyway, so we promoted that as where to go to watch it um, so that people could see the live stream of the concert on the give butter page and at the same time, see the donation feed coming in. Um, right. So, so this video that you're showing there was replaced with the live stream. So the donate button was there as a new donation would come in, people would see it come in while they were watching the concert. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the concert was over, I just very easily um, took off the live stream as the main video mm -hmm. and took it out of the story and put it back at the top. And I mean, it was about 30 seconds to have it flipped back um, to the way it was before the live stream. Mm -hmm. I think that's brilliant um, that you point that out. You have so much autonomy as to where you're going to locate the live stream because some folks watching may not know that. They may think that the live stream has to stay up there once you put it there, but like you said, it takes 30 seconds to just go right back if you want it to, but it is beneficial to keep it at the top while it's live because as you said, people can donate while they're watching at the exact same time. Yeah, and, 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 if, and if they were watching on, on Facebook or in the Facebook app, um, you know, we were telling them to go over there to donate or, or, or do different things. But, um, but for those that were watching it on the GiveButter platform, I mean, it's a lot more fun to say, you know, just click the button right above me, you know, to right. donate. Or, you know, you can see, you know, when you make your gift, you know, you can join, you know, this person right over here. And, and our artist, Wynn Williams, as he was going along and doing the event in between songs, he would go down and he would see who, who had just recently given. And he was giving shout outs to different people for their gifts and thanking them. And um, mm -hmm. so I think it was kind of a, a fun way to just, you know, keep people engaged and, and do something a little different. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm glad that you pointed that out about what Wynn was doing because I also watched part of the live stream and it came across as so genuine. So for anybody who's watching right now, if you're going to um, take a look at this campaign, which you definitely should, go ahead and click watch replay and you can take note of how they ran their live stream. And when just really had a real conversation with people that were watching, it wasn't in incredibly scripted as other live stream fundraising campaigns um, sometimes can be, or even for some organizations should be. But this really worked because it, it felt real when you were watching it, um, not just a performance, but um, a conversation and like everyone was together making impact for good. Um, so thank you for sharing that with us because we're all still learning about live stream. It's totally new for most of us. Do you have any other tips, tricks, lessons learned about Give Butter? I know you're pretty savvy, so maybe if there's anything that you're like, you're thinking, people may not know this, but I've tried this on Give Butter or used that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so not necessarily Give Butter specific, but just in general, we used a matching um, campaign uh, for, right. for this. Um, you know, we found that that is, you know, one of the most effective ways we don't, we don't overuse it. Um, Cause I think, you know, if people always see, see it, it, it can kind of get over overused, but you know, mm -hmm. once to, tw to twice a year, we'll do a match. And so we, um, we kind of go out to our um, larger donors or sponsors and, and ask them if they would be willing to make an additional donation or contribution to help inspire others to be more generous. Um, that's kind of our pitch um, to those donors and sponsors. Um, and it really excites them um, to be able to know that their gift is doubling up. It's, it's not just um, that they're supporting our mission, but that their large gift can also be something that inspires others. Um, and so 
there it's like yeah hey if if you know other people come together and put together fifty thousand dollars i will match that um and so uh it's really exciting for people to be able to um know that 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 their donation goes even further during Habitat Builds Back. You know, that $50 becomes $100. Um, and so that's something that, that people get excited about and, and I think is great to use sparingly, but, um, but, but when it's important. Um, and then with, with Give Butter um, itself, there are just so many uh, things that, that, that I love about it. And, and I think um, I, I'll, I'll get to another tip as well, but I think one of my favorite things about Give Butter is, you know, beyond its user friendliness and and all those things that we've already discussed, um, is just that it's evolving so quickly. Um, I feel like I, I mean, I love following the roadmap of the new features being released. Um, I love how interactive that is. I love how much the the Give Butter team wants to know what's going on, how the platforms being used, how it can be used better. Um, I just feel like I constantly see these new features being released just as I need them, just as I want them. Um, you know, just as I was wanting to do this live stream, I got the email that said, and now you can have live stream on your, on your page. Um, and so um, that's something that I just so appreciate about GiveButter is that, you know, it's not this stale piece of software that was built 10 years ago. Um, but that it's something that's really on the leading edge of fundraising um, constantly. So that's a big thing. Um, other tips uh, that I would that I would have um, is I think the 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 thing for me is you know when it comes to the fundraising, uh, really identifying those kind of champions for our organization. Um, ahead of time and reaching out to them with a personal invitation to fundraise, whether it's members of our board or we have a group of ambassadors um, associated with our with our um, with our organization or even staff members. I mean, we our staff is extremely passionate about our mission, which is very cool to see. Um, and and so finding those people and and reaching out and not just counting on the fact that that people will go to the page and they'll see a fundraise button and they'll just know what that means. You know, we proactively reach out to our champions and say, Hey, you know, click the fundraise button and we would love, you know, click the fundraise button first to set up your page and then be the first donor to your fundraiser. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and so, so those are kind of proactive steps that we take for the fundraising side of it. That's great. And um, thank you, Mark, for what you said about just innovating because truly Give Butter innovates because we're inspired by the adaptability of charities like you. Um, I mean, you're trying new things on this campaign and we're learning with you. And like you said, with live stream, we launched that in two weeks after um, this stay at home orders were in place for most places. But that was because of people like you giving us feedback. And so know that we love getting feedback from you guys. And that's what makes the platform better. Um, and another thing that you shared that I just want to highlight um, was you had mentioned, you know, trying new things like live stream, but also keep the foundational things in place as well, like matching gifts and best practices and team fundraising, like personal invitations, giving instructions. Um, I think there can be a temptation during this time to try all new things and yeah. forget some of the basics. And so I really appreciate and admire that Trinity Habitat has been balancing both. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, well, to close, I just want to say thank you so much for your time for representing Trinity Habitat. Um, your story is inspiring to us and you are so close to reaching your goal. We're cheering you yeah. on. You're almost there. Um, and the whole Give Butter community can't wait to celebrate with you guys. Thank you so much for doing this today. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel. And, and thank you to the whole Give Butter team for all that, uh, all that you do. We're just so grateful for this platform and, and um, to be able to have it. And, and I'm 
we love to share with as many organizations as we can. We have so many people to ask us, what is this give butter thing that you're using? And we love to share it and to have a platform like this at an affordable price is just really important. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Take care.